In the North Sea, 150 kilometers off the coast of the Netherlands, the mega oil rig Noble Piet is racing to drill for gas miles below the frigid waters. It's dangerous work. Meanwhile, in Southeast Asia, on the island nation of Singapore, workers at the vast Keppelfell shipyard are building the newest generation of mega rigs under super tight deadlines. It too is dangerous work because a shipyard is an accident waiting to happen. Workers perch perilously far above the ground. Welding torches spew ultraviolet rays that can sear an eyeball. Potentially lethal loads dangle overhead. To keep their workers from getting killed or injured, the shipyard devotes precious time to meetings where they pound safety messages into workers' military style. The oil rig that's just been assembled in the dry dock is set to be towed out. It needs to be moved to a wharf a few hundred meters away, where workers will spend six months finishing it. But there's a problem. This rig is one of three mega rigs waiting to leave the dry dock. Two other rigs are blocking it. One's a jack-up, and the other's a type of rig called a semi-submersible. In theory, it should be a simple maneuver. Just flood the dry dock and float the rigs. Then open the gate and tow them out one by one. In reality, the maneuver will be anything but simple. The process is incredibly complex, and they've scheduled just two days to move all three rigs. Not only that, the whole operation is fraught with danger. The rigs are huge, and there's very little space between the vessels. But if they collide during the move, or hit the walls of the dry dock, it will be a disaster. We have to be very careful because any damage to the vessel or to the dock will cost us millions of dollars. The process of removing the rigs from the dry dock is called undocking. They're under a severe deadline to undock these rigs right away because dry dock space is the most precious real estate in the shipyard. To keep the rest of the operation on schedule, they need to clear this dry dock for the next round of rigs. But if they're not careful, undocking could pose a threat to the environment. Because work on the hulls has left the dry dock littered with grit made of copper and steel. It's a real mess. If they don't scoop it all up, this metallic debris could end up polluting the Singapore Strait. By late morning, the workers finish the cleanup. They raise a red flag to show they're ready and open a valve to let the water in. It looks like more of a trickle than a gusher. At this rate, it will take all night to fill the dry dock. And the clock is ticking. By the next morning, the water level inside the dry dock has reached only 21 feet. Not high enough. This unexpected delay is going to be costly, with a lot of waiting around on the clock. Lim Yu Seng, known as Captain Lim, is in charge of the undocking. Meeting the deadline is his responsibility, and he knows undockings are always risky. It's not as easy as anybody could do it, is it? You need very special skill in order to maneuver it out without even her touching anything at all. We want her to move out very smoothly and uh, gently. But smoothly and gently will be too much to expect today. Lim's worried. The forecast is for wind and rain. If the storm hits, he'll have to call a halt to the undocking. And that could shred his tight schedule. Three tugboats are standing by because the rigs have no engines to propel themselves out of the dry dock. Captain Lim gives the order to open the gate. Slowly, almost imperceptibly, the gate begins to lower. Finally, the tugs start towing, and the huge semi-submersible rig begins creeping toward open water. But Captain Lim's luck doesn't hold. The weather gods are against him. He makes a tough call. Close the gate. 
in order to prevent the semi and the two rigs in front from any sudden movements, we have no choice but to close back the dock gate again. And uh, we will only resume our operations when the weather is uh, back to normal. It takes two hours for the squall to die down. When it does, Captain Lim seizes the moment. He orders the tugs to haul the rig out into the harbour. This rig is so massive, even these powerful tubs need time to build up speed. Finally, the rig clears the gate. That's one down. But there are still two more to go, and now it's late in the day. They haul the second rig closer to the gate before the weather can change. Once again, Captain Lim gives the go-ahead. The rig starts moving. With luck, the wind will stay calm long enough. It does. The second rig clears the gate and makes it out into open water. But it's too late in the day to move the third rig. They'll have to wait until morning. The next day, the sea is rough and a strong wind is blowing. Captain Lim tries to put a positive spin on the situation. Everything is going very smoothly except for the weather is a bit rough this morning. He knows that he's behind schedule. He can't delay any longer. In spite of the wind, he gives the go-ahead for the gate to be opened. Then the tugs haul the rig toward its new home at the wharf, where Captain Lim hurries to guide it in. It's a tight squeeze. The rig finally docks. Now it will need to stand on its own three legs while it's being completed. But the jack-up system has never been tested. If it fails, it will be a major setback. The 36 jacking motors are started. For the first time ever, this jack-up rises out of the water. The rig passes the test, but it's still not home free. It will take another six months of grueling work to finish construction. After more than two hair-raising days, Captain Lim can breathe easy. He has moved all three rigs. The dry dock is ready for its next job. In spite of some close calls, he's kept his rig safe and the production line moving. But in the North Sea, however, the noble Pete's mission is about to grind to a screeching halt.